Hey everyone, uh, thanks. My name is Hussain, uh, and I'm here to talk about TCP optimization. Uh, there has been several other talks at Velocity about TCP optimization, and I want to take a different approach and talk about some of the challenges and the, the way we discovered problems in our network and areas of improvement. Um, if you look at of what's happening inside CDN. There are a lot of optimizations that we do that is basically invisible to the end user. Uh, our HTTP, our research scientists have recently uh, implemented a major improvement in our internal pop-to-pop -pop, uh, traffics. But unfortunately, most of these, uh, at least uh, for non-dynamic uh, customers, they're not visible to external world. Uh, I'm here to talk about why it also matters to do optimizations at the origin side, especially when you're, if you're running an origin server, even if you're backed by a CDN, the end. Uh, for dynamic object, our performance is somehow tied to the origin performance, and it's important that we can get this content as fast as possible from our origin servers and the content providers. Uh, also, if you look at the clients, traditionally, uh, the whatever we were used to receive from our clients were just the simple act train. But now they're changing with all the video uploads and, and uh, image uploads. They're now, we're seeing the shift in the content uh, delivery as well. So it's now the, the mobile phone that is doing the uh, data delivery back to the uh, publishing point. All right, let me start by telling you a story about uh, one of the things we, uh, we, we found to be wrong in our network. One day we were looking at some of the packet captures, and we knew that these are lossless packets. Everyone expected them to be in slow start, so we were all under the assumption that the TCP bursts were at 10, 20, 40 with the initial congestion of 10. But when we actually counted those packets, we saw something really interesting, uh, that the third pack burst was six, six packets shy of what it should be. And that started the chain of investigation in our team. And then we uncovered several different problems, or limitations, I should say, that were blocking the sender from sending those packets out. And once we fix that, the actual fix might not be relevant to your network, so let me skip that part. But, if, but for folks who haven't done this study, I highly encourage you to take a packet capture of something that you know in a perfect world and see if you, actually, you can actually observe the TCP at its best uh, performing point in the slow start. And see if you get the 10, 20, 40 or something different. Um, all right, so let's talk about some of the challenges of the TCP optimization. One of the main issues is that the details of TCP is buried in many, many different RFCs. And to keep up with those uh, changes, you have to be a frequent traveler to all the IETF meetings and a lot of uh, different mailing lists. And sometimes uh, not many of these RFCs are known. Take this, for instance. There's RFC 2861, which talks about many things, but one of those points is that uh, talks about application limited window. Basically, it says that if you don't have enough data to push the edge of the congestion window, you're not going to earn any credit for that burst, right? Uh, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, it's a discussion for IETF. But now that we know this, let's see if we can actually take advantage of this and do a simple trick to actually save ourselves a couple of round trips. Uh, look at this object delivery. It's a 20K object followed by a 60K object, both in a cold TCP connection, right? Uh, if you download the 20K object first and then the 60K, you end up having one TCP burst that, that is not earning you any congestion credit, right? By a simple reordering of the objects, if you download the larger object face, uh, first and then the 20K, uh, you can save yourself one round trip. Uh, so generally, I mean, HTTP 2 is going to change that a little bit, but generally it's recommended to do, uh, download the, uh, push the larger objects in the pipe first to grow the congestion window as much as we can. The other problem with the TCP is that implementations are different. When you look at um, RFCs, they're recommendations, but when it gets actually implemented by different operating systems, their implementations are different, and sometimes funny things happen when the uh, implementations are different. Take a, take a look at this example. Uh, this is a Linux box trying to deliver a single HTTP packet back to a Windows machine. The Windows machine in this example has a delayed ACK of 200 milliseconds. So once it receives the packet, it's not going to do anything about it for 200 milliseconds, and then finally ACK the packet. By that time, it's already too late for the Linux sender, because Linux also has an initial uh, retransmission time out of 200 in this example. So the retransmission is going to happen. You might say that there's nothing bad happening here, because that retransmission, effectively, that packet has arrived. I'll tell you in the next slide why it's a bad thing. Uh, just a side note that I'm not claiming the discovery of this problem. There has been several different blogs about the sketch point reported this. Uh, I checked with my friends at Google TCP team. They knew about this as well. So it's just an example of uh, why different implementation sometimes ends up in a funny uh, exchange of packets. 
Uh, the problem with that extra retransmission, and even when you mock with TCP, usually you end up with having a lot of retransmission in your hand, right? Which is a trade-off. Do you want to earn performance? But at the end of the day, someone has to pay for those retransmitted packets, right? So usually, the way we describe it is that uh, put a dollar sign next to all of the retransmitted packets. Someone has to pay for them. And if you're making aggressive changes in TCP and you're do ending up uh, doing a lot more retransmission, think of the transit bills that you have to pay at the end of the month. Okay, one of the messages that has been over relayed in velocity by many, many speakers is that before making changes, let's make sure that we measure it correctly. Uh, our chief architect, Rob Peters, was here in Velocity last year, and he explained how we're measuring the TCP performance at a global scale. Basically, we capture the socket info at the end of the connection, and we log that, and we look at the uh, global behavior of TCP. Um, I have to skip this slide because of the timing, but... Uh, Let's make sure that now that we record this, we actually give TCP a simple chance to work the way it's supposed to work. Uh, let me give you two examples. You, I'm sure you've seen this a lot, where in a lot of cases, your TCP throughput is limited by the client. Right? We can, the server can burst a lot more, but it's the window, it's the client who's stopping us. Or cases like this, we ran a study and we looked for networks that are not sending us any window scaling. Without window scaling, we're limited to 64K uh, in flight, right? And look at the histogram. At the end of that histogram, there's this troubling group of uh, networks, which are actually large US banks and corporates and even government agencies, that there is no window scaling coming out of their network for all of their traffic. So it looks like, I hope it's not intentional, but it looks like somehow they decided to disable the window scaling to basically slow down the internet for their clients. Um, these are the things that we can get uh, by studying the, uh, the TCP info at the, from the connections at a large scale. All right, so keeping trends is good for the A-B analysis, for trending, for large-scale analysis. But when you're in the experiment phase, you want to be able to monitor the TCP performance uh, per case and something near real time, right? Well, one of the most commonly used techniques is looking at uh, packet captures and do a post-cap packet capture processing and see if actually what we are improving uh, shows itself, any trace of itself in the, uh, in the packet captures. But I wanted to introduce two more tools uh, in the remaining time that I have uh, that we, uh, we are frequently using. Uh, our engineers are thinking that it's better to actually look at these events in real time and ask the kernel to tell you what's happening. One of the easiest, uh, one of the most uh, useful tools in this domain is TCP probe. It's a very simple kernel module. You load it up and you ask it to listen on a simple port. And what happens is that as soon as you load this kernel module up, for all the packets that you're going to uh, receive, it will give you the details of all of these um, uh, properties of that connection. And then you can build uh, really easy things, really uh, cool things like uh, your congestion window. This is actually from their own man page. You can build your congestion window and this is a slow start threshold uh, correlation in this chart. But we, sometimes we need a lot more data. We need, a lot, we need to actually ask kernel to tell us why exactly he made a certain decision. And for those cases, uh, our research scientists and uh, performance engineers have shifted more towards actually tapping into the system calls, uh, to the kernel calls in this area. And, uh, you know, look at this function in the, in the system tab. You can actually ask the kernel for every single packet that is arriving in your network. It will tell you exactly um, everything that the kernel knows about that packet. So instead of guessing how our kernel reacted to a packet loss, we can actually ask the system to uh, mention that in a real time. Uh, this is as much as I could pack in a 10-minute talk. Uh, I'm hoping to submit a proposal on a longer version of this talk with a lot more examples uh, and how we uh, leverage that um, in our network. Uh, I mentioned Rob Peters. He has a talk tomorrow at 4.15 about uh, deploying at edge and some of the best practices that we have. Um, check that out. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, here's my email. Feel free to reach out. Thank you.